Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into my latest video and this is quite a momentous occasion because I've just recently hit a million views on this channel. Never thought when I started it that I'd be getting into those kind of numbers but uh, yeah, I've done a million which I think is amazing for just a little, small little geeky little channel like this so thank you to everyone that's watching my videos and hopefully you'll uh, find something of interest in my channel to come, such as what we've got today. And uh, today is something a little bit, um, a little bit interesting. And, and this kind of really, I suppose, encapsulates everything that this channel is about. It's about music and it's about electronics. Now, this morning I did something I haven't done for a very long time. In fact, not since before lockdown. And that is, I had a little stall at a local car boot sale and. I haven't done one for a long time and I don't do them very often, I just do them now and again and uh, I had a load of stuff stored up in the garage at my mum's house and I kind of thought well about time I got rid of some of this so I did a boot sale but before it sort of kicked off proper I had a little wander about and I spotted this and uh, I decided I had to buy it and it's called the uh, University of Cambridge Digital Recording Studio. But as you can possibly see, it's, it's a kit. And it's not unlike another kit, which I actually had planned to do a video about. And I'll show you that one first. Now, not long after I did the video about Tandy Electronics, which you may have seen a few months back, um, in fact, quite a few months back, um, I then bought this off eBay and it was, uh, date posted 27th of the 6th so it's, it's been a little while that I've had this sat around so uh, let's get this open and have a look inside and see what we've got now I didn't pay very much for this and you can find these on eBay for you know not a lot of money you know we're talking a few pounds rather than uh, you know large amounts of money and this is this is another kind of real nostalgia fest if you like anyhow this has been uh, wrapped quite well and, and here's the manual for it. So this was called a, a Science Fair 75 in 1 electronic projects kit and if we open the wrapping here um, we've got our, our instruction manual here which uh, gives you lots of circuits and things that you can build with it. Now I used to have one I think it was called a 150 or 160 in 1 I think it was called which probably was about 40 years ago that I got it. Um, so, but, so this one's a smaller version, but it doesn't matter. The, it's, the principle is that it's got a bunch of components on there that you can do something with. Now let's have a look inside. And amazingly, the people that had this, they'd obviously lost the box, so they've actually made a new one. And I think that's been really nicely done. I really do. I think that looks great. So uh, let's whip the top off and have a, have a look inside and see what we've got. And uh, yeah, here it is. So this is the 75 in one uh, electronics kit, I suppose you'd call it. Just zoomed in a little bit. And uh, so what have we got here? Well, we've got a bunch of resistors here. We've got a relay, we've got a light bulb. We have a potentiometer. Uh, here we've got something that just says output. So I'm not sure what that is, output A, output B. Uh, must come from somewhere, although one of the springs has fallen through there. We've got a, a transformer, a loudspeaker, a solar cell, a light sensitive cell. We've got four transistors. Now these two actually look like they're germanium transistors, so uh, you know they're, they're quite vintage really. Um, and then we've got some um, diodes here, we've got some capacitors down here. We've got a tuning coil and a variable capacitor. And we've got a little uh, Morse code oscillator key there. And also got a little VU meter here. And we've got uh, two different battery connectors. So we've got uh, two one and a half volt batteries there and we've got a nine volt battery inside there. Now I've just loosened this out of the box and you can see we've got our missing spring there. Well, if I turn this round, um, you may be able to see that uh, 
here, they're not actually connected to anything. So these, these are just basically like a, a terminal point for, for joining wires together. I think that's basically what it is. Um, but everything, everything else is kind of wired in behind. And we can actually see that, you know, the potentiometer, for example, is a nice, you know, big chunky CTS type pot, which is quite nice. Our little loudspeaker here looks like it may have fallen off at some point because um, it looks like it's been sort of glued or taped in there. But uh, everything else kind of appears as it should be. And uh, so what we're going to do later in the um, video is we'll, uh, we'll build a couple of the sort of more musical related projects on this kit and, uh, and see what happens. But I can't help wondering, and this was one of the main reasons for doing the original video on this which I hadn't made until now was because we have got resistors, capacitors, some transistors including these uh, germanium ones, could we make an effects pedal out of this kit? And I'm thinking some kind of fuzz pedal, some kind of overdrive pedal because we've got amplifier stages, we've got clipping with diodes and we've got a potentiometer. So one of the things I'm going to try and do is to see if I can make like a linear power booster or a fuzz pedal out of this kit. Right then, not made by Tandy, is this one and it is called the University of Cambridge, but I think that's more a, um, a licensing agreement. I don't think they actually made this. And it says down here that it's made by Toy Brokers Limited. So let's get the box open. It's, it's a fairly big box, so you'd expect something fairly chunky inside. And uh, what do we have here? Well, it, it's, it's obviously not as big as uh, the box would suggest, but then these things never are. And we, we've, got a, we've got a manual here. So University of Cambridge Digital Recording Studio Experimental Book. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But uh, we'll just take this out of its box and uh, look at it a bit closer. And we've got a, a sheet here. This is um, instruction amendments. Please refer this sheet before constructing your digital sound laboratory. In other words, they got something wrong in the book and they had to update it. So uh, that's handy to have. I've just disconnected all the wires just so it makes it slightly easier to see. And it's a very similar setup really to the other kit in that we've got resistors here, We've got capacitors here. We've actually got a microphone here. It looks like a little condenser microphone of some description. We've got a potentiometer here. We've got two little tap switches here, a loudspeaker. We've got a light sensor cell there, two LEDs. So the fact it's got LEDs in here rather than a light bulb would suggest this is a lot more modern than the, um, the Tandy one. Uh, we've only got two transistors here. Uh, it doesn't say what, mo what, what they are, but two transistors nonetheless. And then we've got this integrated circuit which says RTS0073. Now, that chip is uh, a sample and hold sort of audio recording chip. It's, it's the kind of thing that would have probably been in things like um, sort of electronic toys and stuff where you have something recorded and it would it would and it would just continuously play it back and uh, one of my colleagues actually built a little box and i think it had one of those chips in it and it was used basically for testing um circuits testing like line circuits of you know microphone cables and whatnot and what you do is you'd record a message on the other end you know saying you know this is channel 32 testing cable and it would just loop that so that when you get to the other end and you're listening to it you know which one it is now if we turn this upside down we can see it's a little bit tidier than on the um on the uh the uh, other one and uh, we've got a circuit board here for the ic and you can also see there's a transistor here as well and this makes me think that th rather than this being purely just an IC, there's some accessory, accessory components on it as well to make the thing work. And I did look at the, up the data sheet of this um, chip and it did have some suggested circuits involving a, a, 
a transistor and a few other bits. So I'm guessing they are probably all on the other side of this circuit board, but I'm not going to take it out. I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, here we've got our little speaker. It's eight ohms, half a watt. And uh, yeah, it's again, very similar to what we have on the other side. And so, yeah, I think what we could probably do now is uh, maybe pop some batteries in and have a look at the booklet and see what, um, what things this, this can do. Now, as we look at the book, it's very much like um, a normal electronics kit in that a lot of the very basic projects are to show how things work. Um, for example, there's a, a thing here, like a, a little flip floppy thing for uh, showing how to charge and discharge a capacitor. Um, and then you've got things like um, how transistors work characteristics of the transistor, light intensity, like a dimmer circuit here. So you could uh, pop all these together and uh, you could dim a light. So uh, we can maybe just do that just to see if the components are still working. Well, fortunately, this particular experiment, this dimmer circuit, um, isn't on the list of uh, amendments. So we should be good on this. So we'll stick some batteries in first. We've got some freshly charged rechargeables here and then I'm just going to follow exactly as it says here so uh, 0 0.65 which is uh, this side of the battery and I think that's it that's the whole circuit wired in so now if I hook this up to the battery We've got nothing happening. So if I turn this up and down, no, absolutely nothing's happening. So either we have duff batteries or something is faulty with this kit. There's a break between the output of the battery going to these terminals. So let's have a little fix of that. Okay, and I think we're in business now. So if I turn this little pot, our little LED comes on like that. Okay, the, the, the kind of the main circuit, I suppose, is this, um, this record sort of sample and hold thing. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll grab all the wires out. I'm going to disconnect everything here. And we'll have a go at building this circuit where, in essence, what it does is you press one button and you can record yourself. And you press another button and you, you can hear it back. This is me testing the recording. It kind of works. It's, you know, <clears throat> I think we've got a few iffy problems with um, connections, but it's basically doing what it's supposed to do. Let's try it again. This is me testing the recording again. This is me testing the recording again. So yeah, it kind of works as, as what it is. Now, it's not super high tech or anything, but I think for, a, you know, something made 30 plus years ago i think think this was probably quite a cool little um little thing to mess around with now there's other circuits as well inside it where you can sort of change the speed and stuff and i think you're basically just making some changes to the chip probably it's not going to be it's clock setting but you know it's going to be something but uh no this thing basically does work so the next thing is can i now use the other kit which is uh this one here and uh, we'll have a look and see what sort of musical bass circuits it's got and whether we can do anything you know a little bit fun with it we've got another problem as well with this one again it's the battery connector the wires aren't going to the terminals I'm holding them on here and it's obviously lighting up the light bulb however if I connect the wires to the little lugs here then uh, we've got nothing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out to the shed I'm just going to resolder these and check all the other components and then I'll think about trying to turn this into something a bit more fun. You can see here we've now got a green LED. It's a slightly different shape to the other one, but it's working. And uh, by virtue of the fact it's working, the battery's working as well. And what I ended up doing was just tacking on an, an extra wire on there and hooking it to the bottom. So at least this now is functioning as it should be. Well, since filming that last bit, I had a couple of ideas about what shall I do with these kits. 
Now I did say early in the video I might try and make a pedal or something out of one, but that's boring. So I've come up with another idea. So I'm going to show you what I've done with the kits. Now for something that is called a digital recording studio, the, the projects that were within the, the kit were mostly based around this, um, this sort of recording circuit here. And there was like, you know, little amplifier circuits and whatnot, but the only thing that w this could generate music with is it, is it did have a circuit in there to make a metronome. Now, basically it's like a sort of two transistor thing. The char charges up a capacitor. It then um, pulses out and then it discharges or it discharges rather to make the pulse. I mean, I'll, I'll explain how it works by just connecting it up and you can see. And you can see the LED is also flashing and you should be able to hear a little, little thud. And if you can't, well, you will hear it. Now I modified the circuit slightly and I actually put this potentiometer in. And so actually when it's in its normal state, it's doing this sort of low, low sort of click. But then if we add a bit more resistance, we can speed it up a bit. But it's actually, the level's not as high and it, it sounds a little bit more like a, an analog bass drum than, than it does when it's at the slower speed and louder. But anyway, that, that's kind of doing that kind of thing. Now with the other kit, this circuit's a little bit more fun. This has actually got a circuit to produce a basic oscillator. Now the only thing I've modified so far on this is I've added the key. So you press it and it brings it in and brings it off. Now, if you press the button down, so you know, you pick, take your pitch, and it just does that kind of thing. Now, because this has got a, a light dependent resistor on here as well, I had the idea where if we put in series with the pot this resistor, this light sensitive res resistor, then what will it do? Well, it kind of does this. And if you turn the knob up a bit, you've got a wider frequency range. So I think that is infinite, <coughs> infinitely more fun than just having a basic oscillator. This then is our circuit, and I'm gonna take the output, one output of the speaker, the ground there. I'm gonna pop it through a resistor, um, say 680K, and I'm then gonna hook another wire across just to, uh, it's just so that we get a you know a, a bit of um, a bit of uh, lower level, and hopefully it's not going to blow anything up. I mean, it should be all right just tapping off the speaker because it, it's very quiet. And then we just get this lead, and I'm popping that into my audio interface. And then if I switch it on, I should be getting something coming out of the speakers. And actually, that doesn't sound too bad. So as this plays back, I'm gonna add some EQ. So I'm gonna take all the top end out and put some bass in. So now we've got something sounding like a bass drum. Now we've got a nice bass drum. Sorry, it's a bit dark, by the way. The, the light's behind me and I haven't set any lights up. We've got a nice sounding bass drum. Now, if I was to add some capacitors into the circuit off the kit, I probably could take off the high end to give it more of a bass drum sound on the actual kit. But just for ease, I'm just using the EQ on the computer. But you know, I think, I think that's a pretty decent sound. So the next thing I'm gonna do now 
is I'm going to try and get some melodies out of this, or if not, just some soundscapey type sounds. Again, I'll do what I did here, and we will just take our little clips, and we're going to connect to the output of this. Now, this has actually got a transformer for the output for the speaker, so I don't think I'm going to bother with a resistor. And also, it's going through a DI box anyway, so it's effectively going through two transistors. Now, interestingly, without speaker connected, I'm not getting any sound. Oh, I know why, because that's, uh, that's not connected. So that's just our sound here. So just as a little um, experiment, if I go into here and I stick some effects in, so if I add some, uh, some echo, I'll add some reverb. Um, let's listen to the sort of sounds we might get out of this. Quite loud, actually. Let me just turn that down a bit. Now, that sounds pretty good. And again, it's purely from an oscillator on here. All I've done is added effects to it. So uh, I'm going to have a, have a little play. Well, after many minutes of time spent composing with my new apparatus, this is a minute's worth of what you can do with a Tandy Science Fair 75 in one kit mixed with a University of Cambridge Digital Recording Studio kit. I hope you enjoy the tune. I suppose effectively what I've created here is no different to what Dick Mick was doing in Hawkwind in the 70s where he used an oscillator, like a piece of test apparatus, plugged into a Watkins copycat echo unit and that's exactly what I've done here except with uh, you know, a little bit cheaper. So uh, yeah, anyway, you know, if you fancy making some weird sounds, you know, you can pick one of these kits up for next to nothing. And you can build a little oscillator kit and have some fun. And if you don't even want to go that far, you know, it's very easy to build an oscillator. Just go on to look Monday Computer's website and look up his super simple oscillator. And, you know, it's pretty much the same thing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of fun. And if you do, please like and subscribe. And I'll catch you on the next one. And in case you want to hear it again, here's that tune.